personally think that we're actually looking at monster black holes where perhaps new laws of physics are emerging. And again, if you can figure all this out, there could be a Nobel Prize waiting for you. <laughs> black holes are well, anything but a hole, anything but an empty space. Rather, it is a great amount of matter packed into a very small area. Think of a star 10 times more massive than the sun squeezed into a sphere approximately the diameter of New York City. That's how you get a black hole. The result is a gravitational field that is so, so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. In recent years, NASA instruments have painted a new picture of these strange objects that are, to many, the most fascinating objects in space. And we have to discuss what the James Webb Space Telescope just found because that is beyond doubt one of the most shocking discoveries of the year. Having outdone itself yet again, James Webb has just detected the oldest black hole in the universe. The father of all black holes, in a sort of way. A cosmic behemoth 10 million times heavier than our sun that ideally, shouldn't even exist. Orbit beyond the blue. The James Webb Space Telescope's powerful cameras allow it to peer back in time to the earliest stages of the universe. It recently discovered six massive earliest galaxies that are possibly the oldest. This requires us to rethink and reassess our cosmological theories. And now, it has discovered a supermassive black hole, which has a mass of 10 million times that of the Sun, at the center of one of these six galaxies. A galaxy that formed just half a billion year after the universe began. Proving yet again, that we need to revisit our current theories. Astronomers think each of these six galaxies could be hosting a supermassive black hole that is millions or even billion times bigger than our Sun. In fact, we now believe that at the center of almost every galaxy in the universe, there's a monstrous black hole that could be millions to billions of times more massive than our own sun. These earliest supermassive black holes could be just one of countless black holes that gorged themselves to even larger sizes during the cosmic dawn, the period starting about 100 million years after the Big Bang when the young universe glowed for a billion years. Astronomers aren't sure why there were so many of these black holes, or how they got so big. How black holes formed so suddenly across our young cosmos remains a mystery. Astronomers are still on the hunt for even younger, hypothesized primordial black holes, which came into being very soon after. Or, according to some theories, even before the Big Bang. But so far, they remain elusive. We really hope an answer emerges soon. Recently, astronomers also discovered that there exists something out there that's even bigger than a supermassive black hole. Ultramassive black holes. While there aren't any fundamental differences between supermassive and ultramassive black holes besides their size, scientists sometimes use the term to set apart the really big ones. The ultramassive black holes we know of are few and far between but a recent discovery could add another to the mix. Scientists detected a dormant, thank God, black hole that's 30 billion times the sun's mass. This was made possible due to gravitational lensing, a phenomenon first predicted by Albert Einstein, and that led to shedding a light, literally, on the previously undetected giant. Far, far away, actually 2.7 billion light years away, at the center of a massive galaxy cluster called Abel 1201 lurks a cosmic colossus. Not content with being supermassive, the monster is an ultramassive black hole, clocking in at around 32.7 billion times the mass of the Sun. Not only was the black hole a big finding, but gravitational lensing helped the researchers create a new technique for discovering other dormant black holes. Such objects don't emit large amounts of energy or interact with their surroundings, making them trickier to find. In the case of Abel 1201, gravitational lensing created a duplicate image of the cluster's brightest galaxy that helped scientists take a closer look at the black hole at its center. Previous research showed that a black hole was present, 
but it wasn't clear until now how big the object was. Looking at the lensed images of Able 1201, researchers trained a computer program to test out possible sizes for the known black hole. Simulations revealed that a black hole with 30 billion solar masses seemed the most likely. Gravitational lensing makes it possible to study inactive black holes, something not currently possible in distant galaxies, said Durham University cosmologist James Nightingale in a press release. This approach could let us detect many more black holes beyond our local universe and reveal how these exotic objects evolved further back in cosmic time. Gravitational lensing has also helped researchers in recent years identify distant galaxies and exoplanets. And with its potential for uncovering some of the sneakiest black holes out there, we could be on the cusp of learning how some of these elusive objects came to be. Earlier this year, two more shocking discoveries were made related to black holes. The first is that something massive and unknown is being sucked into the black hole at the center of our galaxy. And the second, that advanced alien civilizations are using black holes as quantum computers. These two discoveries have been made very close to one another. Are they related? Is the massive object being sucked into the black hole an alien craft? Is what many were asking at the time. Sorry. But no, the massive unidentified object is not an alien spaceship. But that does not make it any less strange. The strange object, dubbed X7, and believed to be a massive cloud of dust and gas, which is about 50 times the mass of Earth, has become immensely elongated by the powerful forces of black hole Sagittarius A. As detailed in a recent paper published in the Astrophysical Journal, Astronomers have found that X7 now stretches 3,000 astronomical units, or 3,000 times the distance between the Sun and us, and we're still not entirely sure where it even came from. We still have plenty to learn about X7's origins. The astronomers suggest it was the result of two stars merging, a clash that ejected a sizable cloud of gas. But we do know one thing for sure. Anything that approaches a black hole will have to deal with extreme gravitational forces. X7, which orbits Sagittarius say star every 170 Earth years or so, is in full rude awakening once it reaches its closest approach to the black hole around the year 2036. Despite its unfortunate fate, the giant cloud will eventually go out with a bang. Its eventual demise will be an event that will likely cause the black hole to light up like fireworks in observations as it heats up. Now, about those aliens using the black hole like a computer. If life is common in our universe, and we have every reason to suspect it is, why do we not see evidence of it everywhere? This is the essence of the Fermi paradox a question that has plagued astronomers and cosmologists almost since the birth of modern astronomy. It is also the reasoning behind the hot tipler conjecture, one of the many proposed resolutions, which asserts that if advanced life had emerged in our galaxy sometime in the past, we would see signs of their activity everywhere we looked. Possible indications include self-replicating probes, megastructures, and other Type 3 like activity. On the other hand, several proposed resolutions challenge the notion that advanced life would operate on such massive scales. Others suggest that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations would be engaged in activities and locales that would make them less noticeable. In a recent study, a German Georgian team of researchers proposed that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations could use black holes as quantum computers. This makes sense from a computing standpoint and offers an explanation for the apparent lack of activity we see when we look at the cosmos. Since then, the vast majority of SETI projects have been geared towards the search for radio techno signatures owing to the ability of radio waves to propagate through interstellar space. There have also been several attempts to study the sky for finding the so-called Dyson Sphere candidates' megastructures built around stars. 
Now, to researchers, Jidvili, a theoretical physicist, and Zazars Manov, a professor of physics, suggest looking for something else altogether, evidence of large-scale quantum computing. The benefits of quantum computing are well documented, which include the ability to process information exponentially faster than digital computing and being immune to decryption. Given the rate at which quantum computing is advancing today, it is entirely logical to assume that an advanced civilization could adapt this technology to a much grander scale. No matter how advanced a civilization is or how different is their particle composition and chemistry from ours, we are unified by laws of quantum physics and gravity. These laws tell us that the most efficient stores of quantum information are black holes. While there's still a lot we don't know about these elusive giants, we have come a long way in understanding black holes. But what do I know? Orbit. Beyond the blue.